Uh, chapter 57, but don't forget the questions, inshallah. Chapter 57, Babu Maja'a fil law. Babu Maja'a fil law. On saying law. Law means if. If only such and such, it would have been such and such. What is the ruling with regarding to this? وَقَوْلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى يَقُولُونَ لَوْ كَانَ لَنَا مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٌ مَا قُتِلْنَهَا هُنَا Which means they say if we had anything to do with the affair, none of us would have been killed here. This is what the hypocrites, they said. The Almighty Allah said, الَّذِينَ قَالُوا لِإِخْوَانِهِمْ وَقَعَدُوا لَوْ أَطَاعُونَ That they are the ones who said about their killed brethren while they themselves sat at home, if only they had listened to us, they would not have been killed. Uh, and of course we see that this is something in the context of being condemned. The hypocrites, they say that. And they use the word if after the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is been uh, made clear. So someone die and they would say if they would have listened to us, they would have not got killed. It's already happened. It was already written. It was already the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this law, basically, or this if, means there is a deficiency in the hearts when it comes to the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they have some deficiency in the believing in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is not permissible in the matters that is already destined that we know it after it happened. How do we know what is written in Lawh al mahfuz We know that after it happened, right? Not before it happens. Before it happens, we do not know. So we take the means. After it happens, we know for sure that this was in the Lawh al mahfuz this was in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that would just bring nothing but misery and detesting the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, if, if a person would say that or use the word law, the word law in itself is not permissible in that sense that it's, you cannot say law, you cannot say if at all. No, it means that in that context that would uh, negate the perfection of the tawheed. But if a person wants to learn from his mistakes <coughs> that he committed a sin and he would say, you know, as a way of regretting it, uh, if I uh, would have done this or whatever there is, to learn not to referring to the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but for him to regret the sin, then this is something that uh, is a good thing that would guide him to do what is good. And also it shows that being careful does not protect you from the calamities, really. We take the means, yes, but everything is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the person needs to be brave not to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, taking the means following the way of the Prophet sallallahu and asking the people of knowledge. And the ones that they already been destined to die, there's nothing that they can do. Right? And that's why the coward, his uh, death is right on his ears as they say. He can't go anywhere. He's just, he's going to live in misery and at the end the destiny will come to him whether he runs away or not. And this is something also mentioned in the Quran. If whether they are in uh, fortresses or castles or whatever there is, death will come to, come to them. Uh, there is no running away from the destiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People take means, but it's permissible means, not haram means to save themselves when it's already been decreed for them. So again, this is, yani, uh, would uh, denies or negates the perfection of one's tawheed. And it shows the actions of the hypocrites. And then the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa في الصحيح عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال احرص على ما ينفعك واستعن بالله ولا تعجزن وإن أصابك شيء فلا تقل لو أني فعلت كذا وكذا لكان كذا وكذا ولكن قل قدر الله ما شاء فعل فإن لو تفتح عمل الشيطان The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said uh, great orders and uh, will and, and, uh, and advices from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم seek carefully what benefits you and seek help only from Allah and neither lose heart or give it up. If any adversity comes to you, don't say, if I had only acted in such and such way, it would have been such and such. But instead say, Qaddar Allah wa fa'al, which means Allah has decreed it and what He willed is done. Verily, if opens the way for the work of the shaitan. So again, this is uh, negates the perfection of the tawheed. That we have the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the things that happens. There is a before and after, right? Before the calamity happens, you are supposed to have to put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At tawakkul, 
والرضا يكتنفان المقدور meaning that you have two things like embracing the qadr before and after the one before is the tawakkul you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you take the permissible means not the haram means you take the means and you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you don't know the future then the qadr of Allah happens you have nothing after that but to be content and to be pleased by the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once you say if I would have went in this street I would have not had the accident the Prophet ﷺ is forbidding us from that. Why? There is no benefit. You already did what you did. It's already happened. There is no way that the time will go back and you would have that choice. So it only brings misery, brings deficiency in the belief of the person that would make him uh, hate and not to be pleased and not to have sabr with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it shows the heart that it has a disease, that it's not content by the qadr and the destiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It also shows the Prophet ﷺ is saying, Ihras ala ma yanfa'uk. That means, uh, seek carefully what benefits you. And this is advice of the Prophet ﷺ that this is part of our religion. To seek what benefits you. In the hereafter, of course, comes first and matters of dunya also. Seek what benefits you. As long as it's halal, as long as it's good, then it would affect good uh, in your hereafter. Wasta'im billah. And seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa la ta'jazan. Do not give up. Do not be lazy. Uh, do not be coward and so on uh, even if it matters of dunya seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't be weak weakness and so on this is something that is against the characteristics of a believer uh, for the believers they seek the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why as a fact the most uh, powerful person on the face of earth are the believers those who put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you're taking the means like everybody else but it's halal only and you're seeking help from the most powerful subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be sufficient for such a person. So it shows the great qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us to have in the deen of Islam and to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's forbidden to be lazy. It is not permissible for a person to be uh, dependent on others in, in, a, in, a, in a wrongfully way or in a sinful way and not to take the means. A person has to take the means and seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, stating the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having the contentment and the patience with regarding to these things and using the word law or if as a way to protest the qadr of Allah when calamity hits this is not permissible and to be warned from the ways of the shaitan because it opens the gate of shaitan on you shaitan is waiting right he's not far away that he comes once in a while to check on the person no he's in the bloodstream as the Prophet ﷺ said, he, any uh, slip that a person would have in his heart as if he smells the person's heart, he would take the opportunity and immediately act accordingly. And his power is nothing but in whisper only. He has not forced nobody to do anything. So there is no excuse for someone to say, Shaitan overpowered me. He has not overpowered nobody. He just whispers. This is the, the plot of Shaitan, is to whisper. And then the person have the decision whether to follow the whispers of shaitan. He beautify things, make things look very nice, make the sin looks very nice. And when a woman, go, she goes out of her home, the shaitan is tashraf has shaitan. The shaitan look at her. He beautify her in the eyes of the people. She does not look what you think she looks like. Meaning the, the woman that is not permissible for you to look at. She does not look like that. It's shaitan beautifying her in your eyes. Right? And then when the Muslim sees that, he would be away from the tricks and the ways of the shaitan. And uh, not to open the doors of shaitan so that he would enter into the heart and attack a uh, person's iman and ruin him. The more the person obeys the shaitan, the more the shaitan gets stronger and he gets weaker. So the next battle, you are a weaker position and shaitan is stronger. Right? And his kaid is so weak if a person opposes that with truthfulness, with iman, with seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. We cannot do it on, our, on ourselves. We have to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high. That's the effect of the tawheed in the heart. Those people who perfect their tawheed, they are the most people, those who are away from the plots of the shaitan. So again, this is a beautiful hadith that needs for us uh, to ponder over and over more.